Welcome back everyone. Boy have I got a monster of a video for you today. In today's video, I'll discuss Tesla's massive earnings results and PayPal's growth drivers for 2024. Let's start with PayPal, then I'll drive into Tesla. By the way, I'm Brian, the Finance Ninja. Oh, and here's Shamo, the lovable pet. So yeah, I have this article from Tub Investing. Oh, first, PayPal, six six six. $63 a share down 2% today. Okay, so I have an article here from Tub Investing at Seeking Alpha. Go follow them. Their content is great. Um, this article is called Four Overlooked But Impactful Growth, Growth Drivers for PayPal in 2024. What could they be? Let's find out. Now, I'm just going to summarize what he says. I'm not going to read the article verbatim. If you, like, if you want to read it, go ahead and read the article. Now, PayPal is the undisputed leader in online payment processing with over 400 million active accounts and more than $1 trillion in total payment volume in 2023. Now, the company has been growing its revenue and earnings at a double-digit pace for years and has a diverse, diversified and innovative portfolio of products and services that cater to both merchants and consumers worldwide. But despite its impressive performance and strong fundamentals, PayPal stock has been under pressure for the past year, losing 80% of its value from its peak. It went from $300 a share to $60 something a share. It's a massive drop. Now, the main reasons for the sell off are increased competition in the digital payment space, especially from, from Apple Pay and BNPL providers the slowdown in e-commerce growth due to the reopening of the economy, and uncertainty around new management led by CEO Alex Chris. Oh, by the way, we're going to get an important update from Alex tomorrow, the 25th. So stick around for that. Um, however, this article writer, Tub Investing, believes that the market is overlooking some key growth drivers that will propel PayPal to new heights in 2024 and beyond. In this video, I will share with you four of these overlooked but impactful growth drivers and why they make PayPal a compelling buy at the current price. The first growth driver they talk about is PayPal's BNPL business. Right here. Now, um, which is called you know, pay, you know, PayPal's Pay Later, <laughs> which offers interest-free installment plans for online purchases. Unlike many of its rivals, PayPal does not charge interest or late fees to consumers and instead collects a higher fee from merchants who benefit from increased sales and conversion rates. This consumer-friendly model makes PayPal more appealing than alternatives, as shown by a recent statistics survey that ranked PayPal as the most popular BNL, B BNPL service in the U.S. I'll never be able to pronounce that um, acronym. Now, PayPal's BNPL service is also integrated with its massive network of over 30 million merchants and 420 million consumers, giving it a huge advantage over standalone BNPL, BNPL providers. There is that acronym again. Moreover, PayPal has partnered with KKR to sell its BNPL debt to third-party investors, reducing its balance sheet and freeing up capital for other growth initiatives. PayPal's BNPL service is expected to generate over $20 billion in total payment volume in 2024 and could become a significant revenue and profit contributor for the company in the long run. That's what I am. I'm a long-term investor. Now, the second growth driver they talk about is uh, actually Stablecoin, PUIUSD which was launched in August 2023 as the first fully backed and transparent digital currency issued by a public company. PYUSD is pegged at 1 to 1 with the US dollar. And this is its leverage over things like, you know, Bitcoin. <laughs> and is supported by PayPal's trust and reputation and is regulated and compliant financial institution. PYUSD has quickly gained popularity among crypto enthusiasts and investors reaching a market capitalization of over $300 million in less than six months. So it's still small potatoes right now, but could grow into something. And the good thing about it is it's stabilized, one-to-one -one piag to fiat currency. 
Now beyond its external appeal, PYUSD could also create internal efficiencies for PayPal's core operations by reducing the transfer costs and friction within its vast payment network. By offering an internal stablecoin, PayPal can enable its cons customers, merchants, and consumers to seamlessly move funds across its ecosystem without relying on third-party intermediaries or fees. This is extremely important. Actually, um, Chase's CEO just recently lauded the benefits of stablecoin. And stablecoin is real, and you know, crypto is real. It's um, the cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, the unstable ones that I don't like. But things like the stable coins, those are those are great. Now this could result in a significant cost and savings, and enhance consumer um, experience for PayPal, as well as open up new use cases and markets for its digital currency. Now that the third growth driver, hidden gems, <laughs> is PayPal's presence in China, which is often overlooked by investors and analysts. PayPal is the first foreign company to gain full control of a Chinese digital payment platform and is focused on powering cross-border trade rather than competing with domestic giants like Alipay and WeChat Pay. WeChat Pay. <laughs> PayPal serves millions of Chinese merchants who sell their products and services to international co consumers, especially emerging markets where PayPal has a strong foothold. But PayPal's opportunity in China is not limited to cross-border transactions. PayPal has a, also a strategic partnership with UnionPay, the largest card network in China, which allows Chinese consumers to use their UnionPay cards to pay abroad through PayPal. Moreover, PayPal has in integrated its services with several major Chinese e-commerce platforms, such as Alibaba, Vipshop, Shine, um, Pinhuoduo, wow, and TikTok Shop, which are expanding rapidly overseas and driving more traffic and volume to PayPal. PayPal's market share in China is estimated to be 11%, which is actually pretty good, and could further grow as the Chinese e-commerce sector continues to um, globalize and innovate. Now, the fourth and final, let me see if I can find it right here. <laughs> the fourth and final growth driver is the potential benefit that PayPal could receive from a rate cut by the Federal Reserve in 2024. Now, as a financial and lending company, PayPal's business is sensitive to interest rate movements and could benefit from lower interest rates in several ways. Several ways. First, lower, lower rates make borrowing cheaper and stimulate more consumer spending, which could boost PayPal's transaction volumes and revenues. Second, lower rates make PayPal's own debt financing less expensive, especially for its revolving credit facilities and its 2022 issued notes which could reduce its interest expenses and improve its profitability. With the consumer economy continuing to drive PayPal's growth, any macroeconomic stimulus from the Fed could give its revenues and earnings an extra lift in 2024. Investors hoping for a rate cut will be watching closely to see if PayPal can capitalize on this opportunity and leverage its scale and network effects. Now these are four overlooked but impactful drivers that you know this article writer Tub Investing believes will make PayPal a winner in 2024 and beyond. Of course, there are also some risks and challenges that PayPal faces, such as the intense competition in the digital payments industry, the potential margin erosion from lower um, take rates, and the uncertainty around the new management team and their vision. But we're going to get more to that tomorrow. However, I think that these risks are more than priced in at the current valuation and that PayPal's strengths and opportunities outweigh its weaknesses and threats. Now, based on his analysis, he thinks that PayPal is severely undervalued and deserves a much higher price earnings ratio than what it is at currently. Um, and then he goes on that if he applies a conservative 20x forward PE ratio, to the consensus EPS estimate of $5.55 for 2024, he comes to a fair value of $111 per share, which is an upside of 68% from the current price of $66. Now this is his base case scenario, but he thinks that PayPal could easily surpass this target if it delivers on its growth drivers 
and surprises the market with positive guidance and results. Therefore, he is bullish on PayPal, and I am too. And I think, or he thinks, and I think that it's a great buy at the current price. Um, he has a long position in PayPal, and he plans to add more shares on any dips. Um, I'm actually in the same boat. I think PayPal is a high-quality company with a strong and competitive moat, a loyal customer base, and a bright future ahead. I believe PayPal will rebound sharply in 2024 and it rewarded long-term shareholders with substantial returns. By the way, PayPal is, tomorrow is PayPal's Innovation Day. Let's watch that together. Now, moving on to Tesla. Now for Tesla, they just released their Q4 earnings today. Let's get to it. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. Okay, Tesla is um, closed at $207. After hours, they're down 2.5%. Um, Mark cap 666. Okay, whatever. Let's get to it. Okay, there's so much new news for Tesla that we have to get into. Um, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so let's get to it. Okay, number one is... Full Sail's Driving 12 just released to um, Holzmark catalog. So check out his videos on YouTube. And this is amazing. FSD 12 is the next revolution in full self driving. And this is critical for Tesla going forward. This is the full stack end to end neural net system. Now keep in mind, this is pre alpha. There are some glitches and bugs in this system, as you will see in these videos but it can do so many more things that 11 could not do. It could park at the at the side of a road. 11 couldn't do that. Um, it's much more smooth, the drives. It's much more fluid. It feels more human-like. It responds more accurately to double-parked cars. And oh my, it's just, it's amazing. You gotta watch it. Again, there's a couple glitches. It's not fully ready for a broad release. But he was able to get it early. And these, I think, are the only videos currently on YouTube recently of FSD 12. So go, ch go check it out. This is whole Mars catalog. Now, what else do we have is Tesla's highly anticipated $25,000 car is set to start production next year. So, yeah, it's nicknamed Redwood. And it's going to start production in 2025, according to Reuters. Now, this is... A compact crossover is what it's, um, the sources say. So yeah, this is going to be a very small car, and this is going to be Tesla's modular car. So this is built in a whole different way than any other car ever built. Everything will be built in separate components and then assembled at the end, whereas currently cars are built on a single line. Um, that's the biggest difference. It's going to reduce costs significantly and it's gonna be able to produce more cars um, in a given factory space far more than any other vehicle ever and they're going to produce mil tesla is going to produce millions of these things every single year so anyway um yeah let's get back to this tesla according to the two sources sent requests for quotes to suppliers for the redwood model last year and expects to produce 10,000 vehicles weekly that's a half million a year now, production would begin in June of next year. I'm assuming this is going to be for the Austin line. Austin's coming online before the Mexico line. And obviously, this is going to be a worldwide vehicle. So everywhere Tesla operates, this will be huge. This will be huge in Europe. Europe requires, for many people, these small compact cars, as does Asia. Um, it's just the way the cities are built. They're built around these small compact vehicles. So these will be massive for Tesla. Um, CEO Elon Musk has been discussing the merits of a cheap vehicle on off the years, 2021, yada, yada, yada. Then there's, an, oh, check out Tesla. If you haven't seen it yet, check out the 2023 Tesla Investors Day. This goes into all the details about the modular design, um, the new manufacturing system. It's just, it goes through basically how it's going to be built. Basically, we know everything about it except the final price and um, what it's going to look like. We already know how it's going to be built. We already know a lot of the internal improvements. It's just those couple of things, but those are big things. The timing of the launch of the next generation compact vehicles, especially in light of 
consistent, blah, 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 blah. They always got to do their downers. These article writers are really very negative Tesla. So you just got to just ignore them. They're like babies. They're all babies. Um, these finance writers. Okay, so the formula for decoding muscular is um, uh, blah, blah. They do nonsense, more nonsense. Okay, source total writers that volume output is more likely more likely to begin in 2026. That's what I expect as well. Um, for it to go into you know, mass production. Mass. Mass, yeah, great word. And they have been overly optimistic, um, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, Munster said last year that $25,000 next gen EV could potentially double Tesla's business. If you know how big Tesla is, doubling it is another level. <laughs> and Tesla will be able to afford it at a profit. Maybe not twenty five, dollars but if they can get it out there at $30,000, you know, due to inflation, that'd be a big boom. See, Gary, Gary Black, Lyle Guys, strong catalyst, such a vehicle will Tesla compete more directly with historically cheaper gas powered cars while still expanding Tesla's customer base to a whole new segment of buyers. Black also said, but well, won't be ready until 2026. Um, the, he's concerned about cannibalization. See, I'm not concerned about cannibalization because um, this car is to be so much different than the Model 3, the Model Y, the S, and the X, and the Cybertruck, rather, um, that. It's a whole new, it's a different segment. The people wanting the super small car aren't the same people buying those other cars today. So I'm not concerned about cannibalization. Um, for example, I wouldn't really be, con I'm not in the market for a compact car. I'm just not. Um, so this isn't of interest to me, but there's millions of people that do. So it's a different market for a different customer base. Um, they talk about, this earnings report, which we're going to go into in a second. Um, let's see here. Blah, blah, blah. More information on release dates, release dates, release dates, production. So, yeah, Musk in December, the Tesla's quite advanced in his efforts to build a cheap vehicle, adding IV the production line plans for that every week. Um, and I think the revolution in manufacturing that will be represented by that car will blow people's minds. He called the next gen platform game changing. Though we declined to share timeline or volume expectations, he did, however, indicate that the first production line will be at Texas, which I just mentioned. The second line will be Mexico. Then it's going to go to Berlin and Shanghai after that, of course. The thing that's most interesting about this is it's, in the next, it's a level production technology that's far in advance of any automotive plant on Earth. It's going to be cool. All right, earnings, earnings, earnings. Oh, before earnings... I have a um, Patreon, and guess what? There's only a couple seats remaining for my early bird $1 tier, and guess what? You would get uh, my DCF valuation spreadsheets, all you know, past, present, and future, my analysis reports. Oh, by the way, I cover growth, tech, and basically growth and tech companies are my focus. So I've got Tesla, I've got PayPal, I've got NVIDIA, AMD, um, Intel, um, and many others. I'm soon going to have a Palantir as well. And I also have a Patreon exclusive portfolio. So you can sort of follow it along as I grow the portfolio into a multi-million dollar account. You can see my buys and my trades as they happen. Um, you're going to get all these extra um, perks. It's only a dollar. And you get all the same perks that the $75 um, tier gets. So it's a $75 value for only a buck. Okay, get to the results. Yeah, enough of that. Okay, so let's see, what do we have? Profitability, $8.9 billion gap operating income in 2023, $2.1 billion in 24, $15 billion gap net income in 2023, $8 billion in Q4. Um, this is huge for net income Q4, it's $8 billion. Um, oh, and there's a tax benefit, so it's not going to be quite that high. Let's see here. $11 billion on gap net income in 2023, $2.5 billion in Q4. Um, yeah, we'll go over that in a second. Non-gap. So pay attention to non-gap in this release. Don't focus on gap because there's this one-time non-cash tax benefit of $6 billion. Recording Q4 for the release of valuation allowance on certain tax-deferred assets. 
So gap results are spiked because of that. So ignore gap, just focus on non-gap. So there's $2.5 billion, focus on that. Let's see, cash, operating cash flow of $13.3 billion, free cash flow of $4.4 billion in 2023, operating cash flow, free cash flow of $2.1 billion in Q4, um, $3 billion increase in the cash investments in Q4, did $30 billion. But, you know, with all these investments Tesla is doing, to still increase their cash by $3 billion in one quarter is excellent. They're ramping. In Berlin, they're wrapping in Austin, and they're wrapping the Cybertruck all at the same time. They're wrapping the 4680s and so many other projects that they're de developing, like FSD, um, their energy business is wrapping, the supercharger business. And to still have this huge amount of free cash flow is amazing, and they're the only company that is doing this. Model Y became the, be uh, the best-selling vehicle in the world. Energy storage deployment has 125% growth in a megawatt hours metric. That's excellent. And that's one of the businesses I'm looking forward to the most, actually, is energy. And that's the one I'm sort of valuing next for Tesla because it's growing far faster than their vehicle business. But um, FSD will overtake it, and so will RoboTaxi. In 2023, we delivered our 1.2 million Model Ys, making it the best-selling vehicle of any kind globally. Um, free cash flows, we just discussed that. Um, with our highest... Cap, CapEx and R&D expenses in the company history. So they're spending for growth in the future. Energy storage capacity deployment to return 14.7 gigawatt hours 2023, more than double compared to the previous year. While energy generation and storage business profits nearly quadrupled in 2023. Gross profit where services and other business increased from $500 million loss in 2019 to a $500 million profit in 2023. That's a nice Turn around there. Cost of goods per sold per vehicle delights sequentially in Q4. Very good. Our team remains focused on growing our output, investing in our future growth, and finding additional cost efficiency for 2024. In late December, we were rolling out V12 of FSD beta. That was to their internal employees plus, you know, whole Mars catalog. Trade now data from a fleet of over a million vehicles. The system uses AI to influence blah, 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 blah. So yeah, new era V12 is. And yes, it is amazing. Check out the Holomars catalog videos here. Check these videos out. It's fantastic. Okay, back to it. Um, get your factory Texas and Cybertruck and this and that. Okay, get to the numbers. All right, so revenues increase 1% year over year. That's mostly due to the price cuts um, because the volumes increased pretty good. Um, volumes increased about 35%, so revenues were flat. Um, energy storage increased 10% year over year to $1.4 billion. Service another increased 27% to $2.1 billion. Uh, by the way, automotive revenues will get better in 2024 since there's no more tax or no more price cuts. Um, looming that I think of or that we know of so with no more um, price cuts the um, the bottom line will increase substantially revenues will increase substantially and all that it, everything's gonna be great in 2024 for Tesla let's see total revenues up 3% um, total gross profits down 23% again price cuts operating expenses are up 27% income for operations down 47% Operating margin de decrease, again, this will increase um, next year. Actually, this is up from last quarter. Last quarter was 7.6%. This quarter is 8.2%. It's a nice increase, but eventually it'll be higher, uh, but not quite to the 16% rate over time. Unless RoboTaxi takes off. Adjusted EBITDA is down 27%. If adjusted EBITDA margin is that, um, did, did anything else special? Net income attributed to common stock. Okay, again, ignore gap. So this is a fake number. Ignore it. Non-gap is down 39%. Um, again, ignore gap. Non-gap is 71 cents per share, down 40%. Price cuts. Let's see. Net cash provided by operating activities. Is this a record? This might be a record. Okay, $4.3 billion in um, net cash provided by operating activities, I think is a record. It beats Q3, beats Q2, beats Q1, and beats Q4 of last year. Let me let me know in the comments. 
Please let me know in the comments. Is this a record? Is $4.3 billion in net cash provided by operating activities a record or not? But yeah, it's up 33% over the last year. Um, capital expenditures is up 24%. Free cash flow is up 45% to $2 billion. This might also be a record. Look at the previous quarters. Hmm. Also, let me know. Is that a record? Maybe. Maybe not. Cash and equivalents is up 31% year over year. Yeah, from $22 billion cash to $29 billion. It's a stable company, and they have a lot of cash. Um, let's see here. What is all this? This is this. Okay, these are the yearly numbers. Yearly uh, revenue is up 15%. Um, auto, Energy is up 54%. Services up 37%. You can read the numbers. Okay, I want to get to exciting stuff. Okay, so revenue got a boost from growth in vehicle deliveries, a, growth in a, a boost from a growth in other parts of the business, and positive foreign exchange impact of $100 million. The negatives were reduced ASPs year over year, excluding foreign exchange impact, including unfavorable impact of mix. Lower FD. Lower FSD revenue recognition year over year due to FSD beta wide release in North America in Q4 of 22. Um, what happened there was they took a lot of the previous periods and they sort of just realized it. Um, so it was just a, that was just a one-time benefit because they realized a bunch of FSD revenues um, last, last year's Q4. Now, profitability got a negative from reduced ASPs, increased in operating expenses, lower FSD revenues, and the cost of the Cybertruck ramp up. Um, this will become less of an issue on Cybertruck ramps. Positives were lower costs per vehicle, including lower raw material costs. Um, the price of lithium is way down. Logistics costs and IRA credit benefits. Growth in uh, vehicle deliveries and gr positive is gross profit growth in energy generation and storage. While it did not impact our income, we did record, we, I discussed that. Um, the cash equivalent equation probably did. We discussed that. Okay, what's next? Operational summary um, production numbers. Um, we discussed production numbers in a previous video, but yeah, they did 500,000 vehicles nearly last quarter, a record, up 13% year over year. Um, and it's not too exciting because we already discussed most of the stuff. Total end of quarter vehicle operating lease. Um, Okay, days of supply is 15, so it's steady, which is good. Actually, a decline from 16, so it's actually getting a little bit better. Storage deployed is 41 megawatts. Uh, who cares about solar? Storage deployed. Ooh, I love storage. Okay, storage is up 30% year over year to 3.2 billion. Um, or 3.2 gigawatt hours. That is good. The thing about storage is it's lumpy. Depending on the contracts, um, the contracts may realize in one quarter versus another quarter just due to timing. So you have... One quarter is that are, some quarters are really high, some quarters are really low. But what do you want to look for in storage or in energy right, storage is the general trend over time. Um, so do a set general trend over time, and that's real to you that storage is booming. Tesla locations increased 25%, mobile service fleet 21%, supercharger stations 27%, supercharger connectors 29%. Those are all good and steady numbers there. Um, production for the year is 1.845 million vehicles, an increase of 35%. Um, total deliveries of increased 38%. Storage deploy increased 125%. <laughs> and yeah. Okay, here's the exciting part. Now, one other thing you'll notice is that actually two quarters ago, Shanghai's um, capacity was 750,000 units. They were sneaky on this. They increased it from 750 to 950, but didn't tell anybody. It's in the report. It's in last quarter's report as well. Last quarter and this quarter, it just shows the number, but they don't talk about it. Not even the earnings call did anybody bring it up. Nobody noticed it. I think I'm the only one that noticed it. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, Berlin's capacity is 375,000. That is good. I think that's the same as last quarter. I'd have to bring it up. I don't remember. Cybertruck is at, uh, has a capacity of 125,000. I believe that's the same as well. I think these numbers are the same as last quarter. Let's see. After our scheduled global factory shut down Q3, our global production reached a record analyzed run rate of nearly 2 million vehicles in Q4. The refreshed Model 3 with significantly quieter cabin and ventilated seats and Highlander is what they're talking about is now available glo globally. 
Um, before Tesla purchased the Fremont factory, the okay, blah 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 blah. We expect the ramp of Cybertruck to be longer than our other models, given its manufacturing complexity. Okay, this is new. So, yeah, it's not great, but what are you gonna do? It'll ramp. The point is, it'll ramp, and when it does, it's gonna be very profitable. Um, Shanghai. Shanghai resumed its normal rate of production in Q4, rebounding from the scheduled downtime in Q3. Production of the updated Model 3 ramped to full speed in less than two months. Full speed, so that's good. Um, seems like it's not that big of an effort to ramp the Highlander. Let's see, Berlin. Model Y production in Berlin continued to grow in Q4, achieving both a record weekly production rate and blah, 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 blah for the seventh consecutive quarter. So Berlin keeps rising. Here's the uh, market share for Tesla. And they're all growing nicely. Um, looks like Europe. Yeah, Europe took a small dip last quarter. But even China is growing market share. So that's good. And then there's a lot more market share to come, believe me. Okay, so for F, for our AI, the FSD, oh, this is the number that we get excited. So this is the trading data. This is the cumulative miles driven with FSD beta. You can see the sudden spike right here. Um, so it's got almost 800 million dollars, 800 million miles of training data for FSD. And they're going to use that to train FSD for the future for F, um, V12 and beyond. So yeah, in Q4 we released our latest FSD beta software V12 to select Tesla employees and whole March catalog, and more recently to customers. Oh, they do list customers. V12 utilizes end-to-end -end training, enhancing the uh, blah 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 blah. Second generation Optimus Mobile Robot, we know that, which uses Tesla Divine Actuator Sensors, both, um, blah, 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 okay. We deliver the Cybertruck with an all to you, we know all that, okay. Okay, ooh, this is nice, this is nice, this is nice. Cost of gold per, sold per vehicle in Q4 2023 is just over 36,000. This is new. Um, this is new news just right now. Yeah, cost of goods sold per vehicle declined, declined sequentially to slightly above $36,000. Even as we approach the natural limit of cost down of our existing vehicle lineup, our team continues to focus on further cost reductions across all points of production, from raw materials to final delivery. This is a significant cost reduction over the previous quarter, and this is the reason why Tesla makes money in EVs, and no other US maker does, is this. And this is what sets them apart. And this is why Tesla, in my opinion, is going to take out one of the OEMs. I think one of the OEMs, legacy OEMs, I think will go out of business. Um, which one? We'll see. But I think it starts with a G. <laughs> energy storage deployment, just look at this spike. This is why I'm excited about energy. Energy is at the beginning of its S curve. And um, some time ago, Elon mentioned the energy he expects will surpass um, auto revenues. I don't know if that's still the case, but this is, this is great growth. Let's see, service and others, very profitable. Anything new here? We mentioned all that. Lathrop, so yeah, um, they're going to be building a, an energy factory in Shanghai. Do they mention that? Uh, no. Okay. Shanghai factory, I think, will go up sometime this year. I don't care about solar, service and other we discussed. Okay, so the outlook. Volume. Our company is currently between two major growth waves. The first being GAN with the global expansion of the Model 3 Y platform. Next one we believe initially by the global expansion of the next vehicle platform. In 2024, our vehicle volume growth rate may be notably lower than the growth rate achieved in 2023. As our teams work on the launch of our next generation vehicle, you know, the one we just talked about, a Gigafactory Texas. So the next gen vehicle will not launch in 2024. It will launch probably 2025 initially in low volumes, high volumes in 2026. So again, they're in this sort of between period of new product launches. So that's why they expect growth to be lower next year. Um, the vehicle volume growth. In 2024, the growth rates of deployments and energy Revenue from an energy storage business should outpace the automotive business. That's expected. Cash. We have sufficient liquidity to fund our product roadmap, long-term capacity expansion plans, and other expenses. 
Furthermore, we'll manage the business such that we maintain a strong balance sheet during this uncertain period. So uncertain, they may think that there's a recession coming. Profit, while we continue to execute on innovations and reduce, to reduce the cost and manufacturing of supplies, over time we expect our hardware related profits to be accompanied by an acceleration of AI, software, and fleet products. Pro Cybertruck production deliveries will ramp throughout this year. Good. Then expected. <laughs> In addition, we continue to make progress on our next generation platform, which again, it's coming soon. We got the note right here. It's coming. It's coming soon. Production start next year? Maybe. Anything else? Some pictures, 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 pictures. Okay, numbers. Graphs. Um, you can look at these with if you want. They look nice. So you look at the general trend here. Um, these are the coordinated numbers. Actually, what you want to look at is the um, trailing numbers. These are a little bit more important because it's more stable. And it just shows the growth o over time. And you can see it's just keeps going up in a steady line. Um, and it's great. Let's see, cash flow, it's kind of due to price cuts. It's sort of steady over the previous quarters. Um, it'll go back up, I think, in 2024. Let's see, financial statements, we kind of went over most of the stuff. Let's see, revenues, anything new. Anything important, interest, income. So yeah, they make more interesting. They're actually making a profit off their cash more than they are from interest expense. Just a little side notes. Uh, let's see, anything else special? Um, I want to get to the segments. Yeah, we know most of the stuff. Okay, yeah, I want to get the segments. Nine reconciliations, digital information. Okay, I missed that. But anyway, so yeah, um, I just want to go full stream because Shama's right there. And guess what? She fell asleep. I hope you didn't fall asleep. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.